Hey guys, I just finished watching the 2022 movie uh, Dual. That's always been a word that I mispronounce. I used to call it doll as a child, like doll wielding, but it's dual wielding, so Dual, dual, I don't know. Um, but yeah, this one is quite crazy. I've been watching a lot of insane movies lately, and this is another one to add to that list. This is one of the more depressing and morbid and cynical films I've watched in a long time, but it has just enough um, tone-deaf, deadpan humor and uh, expectation-subverting comedy to um, keep me from being like 100% depressed, because I don't like it when movies make you leave the theater, which in this case was just, you know, I watched it in my house, but um, I, I would hate to leave a theater being depressed, and this was close to doing that, but it, I think the director understood um, when to inject some levativity uh, at times. I just think, yeah. So, this is a movie about uh, a woman who is uh, dying of an uncur incurable, rare ailment, and uh, in this world, fictional world, um, it's basically identical to ours, except there's one huge difference, which is that cloning technology exists, uh, but you're legally only allowed to do it. Again, just, there is kind of a believability factor here, but just don't try and, don't try and question it too much, just go with it and you'll have more fun. Uh, so legally, you're only allowed to have a clone if you are, um, certain to die very soon. And, uh, the reason you, they sell this I mean, in real life, this would be used for nefarious reasons, but again, in the context of this, uh, they use the cloning process to uh, help ease the pain of loved ones losing someone. Um, again, in real life, no. Not only is that not what it's going to be used for, but it's all, which the film does allude to a little bit, what, what it would actually be used for. Um, but it's, it's like, who in their right mind would actually want a loved one clone? Actually, that being said, if you've lost someone and you would have you would have liked to have them cloned. I'm not going to judge you for that. But remember, this is not a perfect clone. This is not someone who's the same person who's retaining all their memories. It's very different here. This is more like Silly Putty getting imprinted with a mold. Because uh, they're cloned, they spend, they spend like a week together or however long the original person has to live and the, the clone tries to learn as much as they can about them because they're not born with that intrinsic knowledge of that person. They're basically just a template that has to try their best to act like the other person. So, yeah, um, <clears throat> it's like a doppelganger, but like a very ineffective one. So, she does that, and then her clone, um, which the reason for that hap this happening is probably due to her eye color being different. Uh, that was the first tell that there's something wrong with the clone. Um, but this clone doesn't act like the other ones, and actually just straight up decides, you know what, I'm not going to... You know, I, I'm, you know, your life is mine now, you know, like she's not going to, and she's been, the clone has been uh, banking on her primary original uh, dying, uh, but in a twist, she, it turns out Sarah uh, actually is going into remission and she's going to be totally fine after all. So when she tries to get back with her boyfriend and uh, tries to reconnect with her mother and all that, they're just not having it because they prefer the new Sarah, the clone Sarah. Uh, so the two of them seemingly s uh, split ways and just going to live their separate lives, but uh, that's not how it works. Again, in this fictional world, legally, I guess there can't be two people that are the same person. Uh, so they, <laughs> they do this archaic duel, uh, kind of like a gladiatorial duel on a football field where one of them, uh, one of them has to die so the other one can live forever. Uh, even though normally the clone gets uh, decommissioned, I guess there were some legal loopholes or something, again, just don't think about it too much. Um, and it turns out they have to have a duel. So, yeah. Wow. Um, this movie's crazy. So, I, I, I liked it. I definitely liked it, okay? Um, because it was so different and weird and offbeat, uh, I think Karen Gillan carries the movie by herself. Uh, she gives a very awkward robotic, um, like intentionally, intentionally awkward robotic and just emotionless performance, uh, except for those key moments when she is emotional that are very important to take note, notice of because they will come into play. Um, but yeah, she's just so tone deaf and um, deadpanned in this. It's really funny, but also depressing at the same time. This is the most depressing, hilarious movie I've ever seen. Usually those two things don't mix together. And not all dark comedies are like that, okay? Not all dark comedies are depressing. 
but this is a dark comedy that is depressing, is cynical, morbid, um, in it, you know, answers a lot of questions that should never have been asked in the first place. I feel like this was kind of like a twisted wet dream kind of, um, but it's still like classy and somewhat tactful enough to uh, get a pass, you know, they could have, like for example, um, Aaron Paul's character, uh, when she's unable to keep paying him for uh, her services, they allude to, he's like, okay, maybe we can think of another way to pay for it. That one that could be mutually beneficial without using money. And it turns out he just wants some dance lessons, right? So it's a very subversive, expectation subverting comedy that is just deeply depressing, but also hilarious at the same time. Uh, so very wacky, very weird. Um, and yeah, so usually I go like a pros and cons thing, but honestly I don't even want to say pros, I just kind of want to talk more about what the movie, you know, is and what it did. Um, I think maybe if one con is maybe it could be too weird for its own good. Uh, for example, like there is a, um, there is a scene at the morgue with a naked dead lady and I was watching this with my parents and I did not expect to see, you know, an entirely naked dead body, um, but uh, I understand what the scene was going for, but like, you know, I don't know, it was just maybe a bit too weird at certain times, like that one um, doctor character, th like, so Sarah's doctor was unnecessarily weird, like, she was acting like a straight up a AI in that scene, her facial emotions were totally off, everything about her was wrong, and uh, you know, maybe there's some deep dive twists that the doctor is secretly a double but like we know we don't know that so like there's a lot of weirdness going on in this and I respect that but sometimes it can go a little bit overboard and how weird it really wants to be I think well, actually one more criticism I would give is the first third of the movie is too depressing it's too overwhelmingly negative um, because the movies the second third and the, the very final third uh, it's it really there are definitely tons of scenes of levativity Aaron Paul's basically playing like a Rob Schneider character in this, so he's quite funny. And uh, there's a lot of hilarious stuff in this, okay? And I love the dancing, by the way. Karen Gillan's a very good dancer. Um, but uh, yeah, the first third of the movie, just too depressing. Like, we, it really drives home how, how, not, her life isn't awful, but like, she's just not okay with it. Like, she's just, she is deeply hurting, and it's never really dived into deeply enough. It's sort of just surface things. Uh, so maybe if it was a little bit more in depth and impactful, I could have excused it. But this was just surface level depression for the sake of being as depressing as possible. And that first third, I'd say by far the first third is the weakest part of the movie, um, because you know intrigue is still there. You're wondering like what's happening, but like I don't know. That also that boyfriend had zero chemistry with the protagonist, so I did not exactly feel bad when they split up. So yeah, there, it's not a perfect movie, but. It's just wild, and um, Karen uh, just carries it, as I said, and uh, it's, it's just, it's, it's a lot to talk about and take in. Uh, the ending is also quite difficult, to, it's a difficult pill to swallow that ending. I, I, my first reaction was, oh, come on, don't do that, but like after, a, you know, after like 10 minutes now, it's, I'm, it's sinking in a bit better. I do think that was a good direction to go. It was realistic and it was impactful and it makes sense. And I think it's if this ridiculous situation did happen in real life, that is probably what would happen. Um, so I don't hate the ending, but it just be warned it is not exactly happy and it is quite a tough pill to swallow. So Duel is going to get 7 out of 10. It is a wild movie that I'm really happy to ex experience because of how different it is. Um, but it's not something that I would want to see again. Uh, just because now, now that I know the twists and what's happened and everything, there would not be a lot of reason to go see it again. Um, but it's not bad, obviously. I don't want to stress. I don't want to stress the fact that like I didn't like it. I I had a great time with it. I thought it was expertly crafted. Um, but it is just so weird and different, and um, is definitely not going to be for everyone to put it nicely. So yeah, do all seven out of ten. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.